Hey guys, what's up and welcome to a new Tesla update video. Let's go on and just talk about what happened today. Um, yeah, an absolutely horrendous day. Uh, there's, I mean, there's legit... <sighs> Whew, there's no other way to put it. Uh, pretty bad. Uh, not, not good. So I talked about yesterday how there's still one small sliver of hope in all honesty, but I'm not going to lie, it's not looking good. Um, so let's quickly just go over the indices first. Let's get that out of the way, you know. First and foremost, I mean, so it's hard to say. It's hard to say. The good thing is the fact that, well, this looks like a double bottom still, because we still technically on the SPY at least didn't break the 420 low, the 420.76 low. We didn't break that. The low today was 421.35. On the bright side, at least on the SPY, we didn't break that. Not so bright side is that we actually closed lower than any of these dates over here. That's not good. So... Yeah, that's I don't know. That that's not good. Um, it's not it's not looking too hot. The chances of us feeling bullish, I'm not gonna lie, they are uh, going down pretty fast. QQ looks even worse. Uh, QQQ not only ended lower, but it just went lower, <laughs> and and ended lower. Broke past this massive red line that I was talking about, which was kind of the neckline for the head and shoulder pattern. Um, yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I, I mean, you can you can actually make the argument. Yeah, you can actually make the argument that this is technically the actual neckline because this is where really the first shoulder started. So you can actually technically make an argument here. But it's like it's, I don't know. This is like getting a little desperate. Like you can definitely make an argument for this, but this is like kind of pushing it and just getting really desperate to try and find any excuse to be bullish right now. It, it definitely could be, but this is definitely kind of pushing it a bit. But for now, just for the sake of keeping sanity, let's just pray that this, you know, that this this works. But I'm not gonna lie, still, it's still not looking good. So I will say that I, I personally expect a bounce. And literally the only reason I expect a bounce is because I just think we're just oversold. Like for Tesla alone, like literally just this week, essentially, we went from like 926 all the way down to the 760 area. That's an 18% move. We essentially dropped 18% in a week. 18% in a pretty much a week. Like, that's ridiculous. Anytime in the past that we've dropped 18% that fast, like any of these instances or like from here to here or whatever, like we bounced pretty quickly. Like over here, you can see we went up, you know, fall, fall, uh, uh, fell down here, you know, had a couple of green rallies here. And then we essentially went from this 1066 area pretty much straight down to this 852 area. That was a 20% drop. And then we, of course, had a nice little bounce rally up from this 820 all the way up to like almost a thousand, right? So it's like, and then same thing happened here almost, right? So that was a 20% drop. And then once we did this rally, we pretty much plummeted straight from there all the way to 790, which was another 20% drop. And then from there we bounced up and that's where we kind of had that consolidation, which unfortunately broke to the downside, which we talked about a while ago. But the point is, is that we're in a similar spot where in all honesty, we are essentially sitting at an 18% drop at this point, right? It's, uh, you know, not too far off from that 20% that we saw here and here, which followed a rally. And literally, the only reason I'm expecting a rally is literally because we're just so oversold, it feels like. It's just over, it's just so oversold. Like, the one thing that's kind of bullish, I would say, is the fact that now the RSI, because we clearly made a lower low, we broke this 790-ish area, which I said is not gonna be good. And I mean, the second we broke that, it clearly wasn't good. We dropped all the way to 760. Um, but having said that, the RSI, you can see, is essentially double bottoming over here. Like, when you see a stock make a new low like this compared to, like, say, this low here, like, it actually goes lower than that, but the RSI is not going lower or nothing, like, super obviously lower. And you can even argue that the fact that it actually is a little bit higher than this point over here, um, that's actually a good thing. And the reason that's a good thing is because the RSI is showing what's, uh, called a bullish divergence, where it's essentially saying that we are oversold and we are going to be looking for a bounce here. It doesn't mean the bounce will be tomorrow, could be next week, even could be two weeks from now. But the point is, is that we are looking into oversold territory and we are looking for a bullish bounce soon. How big will the bounce be and where will we go? That's still, you know, undecided. But the point is, is that, you know, it is giving us signs that we should, in theory, be looking for a bounce somewhat soon-ish. Um, again, it even could be tomorrow, and I, I honestly think, I, I think it'll be tomorrow, but Thursdays and especially Fridays, you guys know how I feel about Fridays, I don't like Fridays, I think Fridays are pretty bearish days overall, 
especially with this war looming. Like the only reason th this is, in my opinion at least, that these drops are just so disgustingly aggressive and just fast is literally because there's a, a potential like legitimate World War Three almost looming. Like it's not even it's not even a joke. Like it's legitimately it's it's an issue. It's a serious issue. Um, and that's obviously not good. So I, in my opinion, that's essentially what's causing these like big sell-offs. Like, you know, you have the whole Fed and interest rate thing and everything. Don't get me wrong. We already priced a lot of that in. And I mean, there could be more to price in, of course. But I really do think that these major drops we're getting right now is, yeah, this, I mean, people are they're scared of a war. I mean, I mean, rightfully so, of course, it's a freaking war. But that's what's causing this. So like I said earlier, um, if we ever get any signs that this war is, you know, not going to happen or it's easing or there's, you know, essentially positive signs towards it. I do think we'll bounce extremely aggressively upwards from whatever the price will be at by the time that happens. But again, if we keep getting bad news and especially if like an actual like war deaths and things like that start, man, this is, we got, I, th I still think we got a ways to go. Now, I did draw a couple supports here uh, just underneath. So the first one, we actually bounced off fairly well, which is around that 760-ish area, right? You can see, you know, it showed uh, some support here or resistance here, some support here. You know, a little bit of support and whatnot around this general area, even some, you know, uh, support and resistance around here. And then the next one is not too far under, which is uh, around that 730-ish area. You can see specifically, uh, like, right around this area, a lot of, you know, resistance. Then we kind of bounced over it, had some nice support over here. So those are the areas there. Uh, and looking at the weekly, uh, I definitely think that, you know, if these break, then we're most likely going to be revisiting. Like, I personally think... Absolute worst case scenario, in my honest opinion, would be somewhere around this like 600 area, 590 to 600 area. In my opinion, that sh in theory should be worst case scenario. Will we see 600 Tesla? Man, at this rate, who the hell knows? In all honesty, if we d if Putin decides to attack Ukraine and just start a full on war, I mean, we'll probably see 400. In all honesty, but like. Uh if things don't start looking up relatively soon, then we're definitely going to be seeing one of these two prices. And I mean, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised to even see a, like, some more in the 600s at this point, in all honesty. But I do think that 600 realistically should be worst case scenario, unless like something just absolutely horrible happens. Um, and that's essentially what I'm looking at right now. Another thing to remind, uh, remind yourself of is we're still technically in this bullish flag. At this point, it's hard to even call it a bull flag. It doesn't feel like a bull flag anymore. It just feels like just a flag of never ending pain. But nonetheless, we're still technically in this. And, you know, the next support is somewhere around that, pretty much around this line right here, which is around that 730 ish uh, level. Are we going to see that? I don't know. I picked up a few more shares today, I picked up like 15 shares today. Uh, but I have a lot of cash in my account, my bank accounts, that I'm willing to tap into if we ever go into the 600s. That's, th but that cash I'm holding on to like, that's just like, that's like my cushion right now. That's the only thing that's making me not feel as bad about these drops at the moment, on top of, of course, selling calls. But that's the thing I'm going to tap into if we drop into like the 600s, somewhere in the 600s, then I'll probably start tapping into that cash. Um, but until then, yeah, I'm just selling calls and just, yeah, writing this out, essentially. Um, but yeah, that's essentially what I'm seeing, guys. So, you know, nice little bounce here. Again, I'm expecting a bounce mainly because we're just so oversold. Maybe we'll, we will drop to 730 and then bounce. I don't know for sure. It'll be one of the two, in my opinion. And then like at that point, like as much as things can just keep going up and stonks can't just keep going up, the flip is true as well. Like things can't, things can't just keep going down either. And the price for buying puts right now is just getting so expensive because we're just downtrending so aggressively that you know, the premium on those things is just skyrocketing. Like it's insane. So we'll see what happens, guys. That's essentially what I'm thinking right now. I'm not gonna lie, it's not looking pretty. Um, we'll see where this next bounce leads us to. It's probably gonna be a dead cat bounce in all honesty, but again, if something comes out that says that the war is getting, you know, or there's not gonna be a war rather, uh, you know, th tensions are getting, you know, easing and it's more obvious as to what's gonna happen and it'll be, you know, peaceful, whatever. I think we rally. I think that's going to be the catalyst. We need to start really rallying until, you know, the Fed maybe decides to stop it. But until then, guys, we'll take this a day at a time. Not looking good. I'll be honest. Yeah, it is what it is. I mean, hey, it just it is what it is. Uh, we'll see you guys for tomorrow. We'll take it a day, you know, day by day. See what happens. But until then, thanks for watching, guys. Stay safe out there. Make sure you invest wisely. And sometimes if you can't handle this pain, if you can't handle this volatility, literally just delete the app. Maybe if you have some extra cash, put in a buy order at some price you think, let's say for Tesla, that you think will just be a bargain of the century. Like let's say, let's say you think 600 is a bargain of the century. Put some price, put some buy orders, 
at 600. If it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And then check back in maybe six months. Who knows? But either way, I'll see you guys tomorrow for the update. Until then, peace, peace, peace.